But I wonder how they're feeling, how they keep going and how they keep their end up. Well, well, I guess one minor party, if you're going to pick out of the minors, the major minor party, Democracy New Zealand's done all right and their people are pretty vocal and pretty active and I think they launched yesterday a law and order or a safer communities policy. So how are they feeling? How do you keep going? As and also ran in an election, um, I thought we'd have a talk because it would be fair to Matt King, the leader of Democracy in New Zealand. Matt, welcome. How are you? G'day, Sean. I love the way you're so dismissive of us. It's just the theme of yours, but hey, we're... No, no, it's just the <laughs> truth, Matt. I'm not being dismissive. I'm just <laughs> reporting facts, mate. Hey, look, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure if the platform was going in 2017 when I ran against Winston Peters in Northland, you would have been exactly the same. Who were you running for in 2017? What party were you standing for? Well, I was, I, I was running for National. Definitely. Yeah, so you, I would have given you a chance because National are a major party, man. No, but the previous national candidate got flogged by Winston. So, you know... Okay, so you used... Okay, oh, hang on, this is getting even even wackier. You think you're going to win Northland? Look, that's what we're, uh, our strategy is, yeah, and I'm, I'm out there every day at the moment talking to people, and I'm getting a really positive response. Okay. There's a, there, yeah, there's a strategy behind it, Sean. There's a strategy. Oh, yeah, so you don't need 5%. You're not interested in 5%. It's all about Matt King and Northland. Well, the reality is, if you look at minor parties that have got in over the years, um, the, 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 the easiest option is to win a seat. I mean, ACT will tell you that, 0.5% in 2017. David Seymour got in, and now he's pumping. You know, the Maori Party, they got 1.2%, but they, got a, they won a seat, so they got in. So that's, that's, the, you know, yeah. that's the way forward, I reckon. Matt, you've lost a few people and a few candidates, though, haven't you? It's been a bit messy. Oh, look, you know, um, I've lost about the same number of... Um, um, candidates out of out of uh, you know twenty or fifteen odd that we had that as the Net Labour Party have lost cabinet ministers. So, um, but I know that minor parties have lost um, candidates. I mean, New Conservatives lost twenty before the last election, and Advance lost a few. And it, it's not uncommon to. I mean, even Nationals lost two or three um, in the lead up to the election. So, I mean, it's not uncommon. Yeah, Matt. The truth well, is, though, during an election campaign, the focus changes, um, the big boys get their game faces on, and it's much, much harder. I mean, you know, up to polling day now, you're up against it. Oh, look, you know, I mean, if you, if you look at measurements, OK, the local um, net candidate up here has got 565 followers on, on Facebook. I've got 34,000. Um, I will yeah, speak but Matt, 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 can I just start you there? Facebook doesn't win you an election. Facebook followers don't. No, no it, no, it doesn't. But when you're a minor party and you don't get mainstream media coverage, social media is the way to get your message out. And when I talk to people, I'm out there talking to people. They say, oh, yeah, no, I'll follow you on Facebook. I've seen some of your social media stuff. So that's the way we do it. And, um, I mean, I was out there yesterday walking the streets, talking to shopkeepers. Probably, um, I don't know, seven out of ten of them knew who I was or knew of me already, regardless, you know, whereas yeah. the last time around in 2017, I'd walk into a, a shop or a business and they wouldn't even know who the hell I was. Okay. Um, and, you, yeah, so I'm used to campaigning. I know what it's like. I've been on the ground. I've been, I was an MP for a, a term and I'm pretty sure most people up here, based on my my, my election result last election, were, were happy with my performance because I was one of the, I was well, I was the only MP in National that actually got more votes in 2017. All right, Matt. So really, you're just running an electric campaign. Look, we've got candidates all around the country. They're all running two ticks, and I am running two ticks. But I am appealing to the blue voter in Northam to say, hey, you can be strategic with your vote. You can you can party vote your party that you've always voted for, and, and ensure they get in in government. But you can give your candidate vote to me, and then then you're picking me as your MP, and I'll I'll ensure these Labor guys are gone for a, as long as we can. All right, I'm going to indulge you, Matt. Yes. Let's say you get in. Just you. Yeah. Would you Just do a me. deal? <laughs> Who would you coalesce with? Who are you ruling in and out, in or out? <laughs> Look, I, I've, I've, I've definitely said that I'll rule out Labor, Greens, and Mary Party because no, no, no amount of uh, no amount of anything would. Uh, well, could I go with them? They're just the rot most rotten and common in government we've ever had. So yeah. everyone else is on. Everyone else, I'll talk to. You talk to Winston. I, I've, I've talked to Winston a few times, yeah. Oh, yeah? You talked to David Seymour? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. I mean, when he was a one-man band, when he was a one-man band, when I was an MP, he was a one-man band. He was a lone ranger. He was a sorry bugger wandering around Parliament. But 
you know what? I got on quite well with the man, and I agreed with quite a few of the things he said, and look at him now. All right. So you're not going to quit. You don't get reach a point. I mean, you haven't been through a crisis of confidence and thought, oh, God, why? Oh, no, hell no. Hell no. Look, I mean, every day I go out there. I mean, I'm used to doing the hard yards, Sean. You know, like you kicked off your your uh, your show, the platform, that you had, to, you had to grind away for a while, and now you're mm. going for it. Well, I'm the same. Yeah. All right. What then? Uh, look, I'm going to give you a crack because I gave Brian Tamaki a crack. You say you, you've had your law and order policy or your, your your public safety policy out. Tell us about that. Well, we're, we're, we've got we're working on principles, um, Sean. Because, like for me, I mean, I was a copper, and, and we've got a lot of stuff that we haven't put in our policy. Like, for example, I want cameras. I want all public facing cops. Um, wearing uh, body cams, you know, that's one thing to protect everyone, protect the police, protect the public. I want I want the rules changed around car chases because obviously um, the lot softening... What, what do you want the, the rules public. changed to? I, I want someone, anyone that's run from the police in the past, previously convicted of running from the police and driven dangerously, if they're caught again and they do the same, they're, they're definitely going to do a, a, a bit of time behind bars. Like, just make it so that um, there is an absolute incentive to pull over. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. So it's a sentencing change, hoping to, to create a change of behaviour, not a change oh, to penalty, police yeah. policy in, in pursuit. Well, I know I want the police to... You have to... You, the idea that you can stop chasing crooks um, is, is just... Uh, it, all it did was double the amount of car chases the police had, from 5,000 to 10,000. That was what the policy change about not chasing crooks uh, led to. So what, what was the point? It just it led to a, a doubling of the car chases and therefore the potential for disaster. All right. So what else? Or is that the policy? No, no, no. We've got a whole range of policies around law and order. I mean, I, I think we should be, to we should be f fully resourcing our organised crime units and targeting the, the high-level criminals, the 501s, the gang members, because they're the ones that do the high-level right. stuff that, that create all the crime that the young fellas do that, to do the burglaries to pay for the drugs. So, And also, when you seize the assets of um, organised criminals, I mean, that really hurts them, you know, so that we should be funding that because it almost pays for itself. All right, but the government's already introduced all sorts of things for gangs and gangs associating asset seizures. There's been oh, quite a lot of development there. No teeth in it. They're soft. If they make it hard for the police to do their work, cops won't do it because they're busy. Okay, and how are you going to make it easier, just specifically... Policy-wise? Well, obviously, we need to target our, res our organised crime units. I mean, we've got, we've got a lot of cops... You no, know, no, 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 OK, OK, we need to target. So how do you do that? What's your policy? Well, you, what you do is you resource the organised crime units um, properly so that they have the... OK, so what is your them. policy on how much more resource goes to the organised crime units? We don't have numbers, I'm just saying it's a... Well, then it's not a policy, policy, Matt, it's just rhetoric. Yes. No, it isn't. It's a policy. It's a policy to get in there. So what's your policy to target and further resource um, organised crime units? Well, at the moment, at the moment, there is, uh, there is a... I, I guess there's a, that we've got a soft police force that are touchy-feely. Like no, more rhetoric. Order. I'm after specifics of policies. Are they written down somewhere? Oh, we've got them on our website. We've got, but what I said was, we're pr the principles. The principles are what we want to do. Okay, so, so you, you don't have pol your pol you are you are campaigning without policies, just with principles. Oh, you're funny, Sean. You're so funny. <laughs> no, well, don't policy, laugh at me. It's a legitimate really, question, yeah, and people okay, have got a right okay, to know. Okay. I, and and, yeah, and yeah, I'm not yeah. saying there's anything wrong if you are just. Yeah. Uh, campaigning yeah. on principles. A lot so, of people get away with that. But I'm just saying, so, so, I asked you yeah. if you had policies. You said, yes, I do. I asked you for specifics, and you say, I don't. I've got principles. Yeah, no, no, no. What I did was I told you a couple of examples of a couple of uh, policies. Well, they weren't po examples of policies. They yeah. were rhetoric. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. If you look through any of the policies of any of the parties, they've got principles, and then they've got some ideas, like, for example... Oh, so hang on, hang on, hang on. You didn't say policies, some ideas. <laughs> hey, Sean, you know what you're doing? You're, you're, you're dancing on the head of a pin. No, no, you I'm asking you, you a question, and I'm yeah, expecting yeah, some answers, yeah, and it's yeah, okay if I'm, your answer is, I don't really have any policies. I, I absolutely just gave you some policy. Okay, so name I me one you. specific policy in the police space. Okay, I just told you, we want all public-facing police officers wearing body cams. That is a policy. That is a policy. Okay, how much does that one. cost? It's a major one. All right, let's take but, that uh, to uh, policy. Body, body cams on cops. How much does that cost? Yeah. Okay, well, they actually have 
and they actually have thousands of body cams in storage in the warehouses now. They've already been purchased. They're sitting there. How do you know but that? I have people. Used to be a okay, so my uh, question was, how much does did that or did they cost? How much will it cost to deploy them? Well, I, they've already been purchased. Um, Sean, they're just not being used. So, okay. So the, it's irrelevant. The cost is already... It, so it, we've got enough body state. cams for every on-duty police officer in this country? Look, I, all I know, all I know is from the information from within the police force is they have them in this warehouse now. So Where's the warehouse? Like, I don't know that, Sean. Oh, well, why? <laughs> you've got all this inside information. I, Which warehouse? Uh, Where's the secret? Sure. Where is the secret repository <laughs> uh, of police body cams? You, why don't you get the commissioner on and you ask him a question? Have you? Because oh, the commissioner of police won't it. come on with me. No police officer will come on the platform because <laughs> we've been like cancelled by them. But I'm not just asking you. Oh, you've got all this inside knowledge. There's a secret warehouse somewhere full of body cams no, no, that the government sure, won't sure. release. I mean, it's a great Sean. story. I just try to get some meat on the bones, mate. What, what, I'm, what I'm telling you, Sean, God, you're funny. You should be a comedian. You know what we have? We have information. You've beaten me to it, man, to be honest. Yeah. Um. <laughs> hey, okay, okay, okay. So, so I, have got, I have inside knowledge from cops that I know that there is a whole lot of body cams in storage and they haven't deployed them. I don't know the reason behind it. Why? <laughs> Maybe, but you know, I went to the hospital on the North Shore Hospital. No, no, don't tell me uh, another that, story, no, Matt. No, Let's get I'm down to the interview. Where uh, are they? When I, were they purchased? How much do they cost each? So, what you're saying to me by that qualified question is you're saying that I'm making this up. I'm you're just saying I don't see any official proof or any, any details about your claim. But because the information I've got was passed to me by police, and I did not think that you were going to ask me the question to try and prove it. I'll that I was just going to try and but, get down and drill down well, on a policy, well, man. Well, of course security, I was. The, so the security guard at the local hospital has a body cam on. And that, that's, the, that's the average yeah. the local hospital. So, so why are our police, our front-facing police, not body cammed up? I mean, it's good for them. It's good for them. It makes it safer for them. It's and they could be sort of, because... The government has the body cameras, but it's keeping them at a secret location somewhere. No, no. what is happening is the police obviously haven't decided to deploy them yet, but maybe they are. Maybe they are, and what we're saying is get them on the, get them on the officers now. Okay, them, so the one policy the we've nailed you down on is you believe police should be, have to wear body cameras. Yes. And, and we've already got the body cameras, though we haven't got that yep. officially. The government, yep. okay, all right. Yep. It's a great policy, Sean, and you get me on every week and I'll give you another one and I'll give you some specifics every time. All right. Happy to do it. What? Have you got plans for after the election? I'll go down to Wellington and I'll be in, in discussions with uh, probably the National and Act Party to form a good, strong, um, solid government that we can get on with life and, and respect our rights. Matt, I love the fact you come on. Um, always good talking to you. Take it easy. Good luck. Good on you, Sean. Cheers. Cheers. That is Matt King. He is the leader of democracy of New Zealand. Oh, boy. And I don't know. I love a try. I love the underdog.